Welcome to um, chapter 31, Immunology. Excuse some of the references to chapter 43. I still kept um, some of my figures from the Campbell textbook because I think they, uh, yeah, they just add to it. A little different words, uh, same idea. So um, your immune system has two major facets to it. Um, one we call the innate immunity. And basically this level of the immune system kind of doesn't care what's come in to infect you. It's some pathogen, it's something bad for you. We'll delineate those as we go on. And its job is to keep that pathogen from doing you harm. The other wing of our immune system is called acquired immunity. Sometimes it's also called the adaptive immunity. And basically, you're born with the ability to recognize many pathogens very specifically. Here, specific would be the keyword here. And um, the acquired part of it is that you basically select for these cells that might recognize a particular pathogen and then expand them and make them even better to find that pathogen. But they only get activated um, when you recognize that pathogen or when you're exposed to that pathogen. So you acquire a greater amount of immunity with this one. We'll do that one second. So uh, first let's focus on the innate immunity. Um, it's going to recognize, like it says, a broad range of things about pathogens and basically say, bad guy, got to get rid of it. There's two ways that it happens. There's that first line of defense, which is essentially a barrier. Um, I'll have a visual for this again later. But it's your skin. Your skin's protective layer, right? It's not going to let things go through. Your skin actually has a uh, slightly lower pH on it, which is eh, just so a little bit inhospitable to some uh, many bacteria. With that said, there's a lot of bacteria that lives on your skin, and it's just adapted for that environment, but it doesn't hurt you. It's, uh, um, it's, it's mutualistic. Um, we have mucous membranes lining your nose, lining your throat, basically all those areas um, that are exposed to the world and get in contact with any pathogens and maybe provide a thicker barrier to prevent those um, pathogens from getting through. And we have a series of secretions that help protect us. Again, there's the mucus secretions. Um, your eyes have some pretty fascinating stuff in them. So your eyes are really exposed to the world. You just have a lot of stuff um, hitting them. And they're pretty much a direct path into your body. Um, so one of the components of your eyes is called lysozyme. Um, actually would fall into this antimicrobial proteins, but it's actually made in a secretion. Um, and lysozyme is um, an enzyme that don't confuse it with lysosome, unfortunately, it's lysozyme. It's an enzyme that um, chews through the cell wall of bacteria. So if a bacteria gets in your eye, the cell wall gets digested by this enzyme and hopefully it doesn't hurt you. If a cell gets, uh, a pathogen gets inside you, again, there's a series of nonspecific um, defense systems that kick in. There's these cell called phagocytic cells, which we'll talk about in more detail in a minute, neutrophils and macrophages, and they engulf the pathogen, chew it up. A series of antimicrobial proteins, some cytokines that go in and basically neutralize the pathogen. The inflammatory response, we've already talked about this in class. So this is the idea that um, your vessels get a little leaky. Maybe you have um, prostaglandins secreted, which are going to raise the temperature of your body, you have a little fever. Um, it's a whole series of events that um, if you get a splinter, which is the example we're going to use a lot here, um, that area gets a little swollen. And then we have a bunch of cells called natural killer cells who are sort of prowling around for bad cells to um, kill them. So, moving on. Here's a collection of all of the important cells um, that are classified as white blood cells in your body. Um, I'm going to use this figure first to remind you that all of the cells in the immune system arise from a pluripotent stem cell that lives in your bone marrow. So um, you have heard about stem cells, you're continuing to hear about stem cells. There's different kinds of stem cells. There's the totipotent stem cell that's part of the embryo that can make a whole new human being if we're going to keep it in the human world. Um, and then there's other ones that are um, restricted a little bit. So they've developed somewhat, they live in a particular um, part of the body, and they replenish cells in that particular area. So the pluripotent bone marrow stem cells um, rely, reside in your bone marrow. And depending on the growth factor they receive, first off, they can go down two pathways. They can become a lymphoid cell, stem cell, which also still stays in the bone marrow. 
Let's do this one first. And if that lymphoid cell continues to get new, more growth factors, um, maybe it'll develop into a B cell. We know those make antibodies. And another set of growth factors send it on its way to become a T cell. We're going to go into these guys later on. These are called lymphocytes, and um, they are the important ones for the adaptive immunity or the acquired immunity. So these are the specific cells that recognize pathogens at a very amino acid specific level and um, can discriminate between even two different um, types of influenza. Um, we'll go with those do those later. So the other guys get a message in the bone marrow to become myeloid stem cells. And then this is another self-renewing stem cell population that hangs out in your bone marrow. And then depending on the needs of your body, it will develop into all these different cells. Um, if it gets the growth factor called erythropoietin, it will develop into an erythrocyte or a red blood cell. A red blood cell is a highly differentiated cell. We've talked about it so many times. It has hemoglobin in it, it has special cell membrane, it has a special shape, it actually loses its nucleus at the end. Another um, group of cells that um, is highly differentiated and actually fragments and is not even a dividing cell anymore are called platelets. Platelets are critical for blood clotting. So remember when a, there's a wound, um, platelets get activated. They secrete a series of enzymes that starts the clotting cascade. They also help to um, um, cleave um, fibrin, fibrinogen into fibrin and collect, uh, kind of catch all these cells and make the clot. Another kind of um, stem cell are called monocytes, and these can get differentiated further into the macrophages and the um, dendritic cells. I'll talk about those. These are phagocytic cells, meaning they like to engulf pathogens and eat them up. Neutrophils are another type of phagocytic cell. They also um, engulf pathogens and eat them up. Difference between these two guys is when the neutrophil engulfs the pathogen and destroys it, the neutrophil dies too get some pus that builds up in a wound, or maybe a pimple. Um, basically, that's dead neutrophils and the things that they've eaten. Monocytes, on the other hand, act as antigen-presenting cells. We're going to talk about those a lot in the next, uh, next uh, talk. Monocytes eat up pathogens, chop them into little pieces, and then present them to the T-cell world to tell the T-cells there's a problem. We'll deal with that again later. Eosinophils, basophils, um, they're involved in um, removing uh, parasites and such, things that are a little bit um, um, less prokaryotic and uh, a little more um, eukaryotic. Going back to this slide, let's see if we have any other things. So um, basophils were not in that previous picture. These are the guys that are basically buckets of histamine. Um, one of their jobs, unfortunately, um, or one of their jobs is to release histamine, and sometimes if it's unregulated, um, it can release too, too much histamine. A mast cell also can release histamine, and mast cells are, um, they have a special receptor on them for some antibodies, and sometimes they get inappropriately activated to release histamine, and they um, contribute to sort of an allergy response. Um, so I said that eosinophils were part of that parasite stuff, killing off parasites. I told you neutrophils um, help to digest microorganisms. Monocytes, macrophages, dendritic cells, Again, these guys are all in the same family, different developmental stages. They engulf pathogens and eventually talk to T cells. B cells make antibodies. T cells, two different kinds, helper and killer, and are um, cytotoxic. We'll talk about them later. And then natural killer cells, we didn't talk about. Those are a special kind of cell which basically are surveying the body. They um, can a little bit less specifically find a virus-infected cell and kill it doesn't kind of care what virus is infecting it. And then they also are on the prowl for finding cancerous body cells, so your body cells who have gone wrong and get rid of those. Um, when we talked about the circulatory system, um, Principles of Life textbook also had the um, lymphatic system, and I said that we'd save our discussion till now because I think it makes more sense. So the lymphatic system is basically a parallel set of vessels. So here's our blood capillaries, and then basically a parallel set of uh, vessels are lymphatic vessels. Um, around them are the cells, and then they show you a line here. This little space between cells is called interstitial fluid. So basically the interstitial fluid or the fluid around cells kind of dumps into the lymph system, and then the lymphatic vessels is these green lines you can see around here all dump into these little um, lymphoid organs or lymph nodes, um, different um, plate collecting areas where um, a lot of um, B cells and T cells and macrophage mages reside. Um, so you have lymph nodes and collecting places and special neck 
underarms, the groin area. Um, other organs that are considered part of the um, lymphatic system are your spleen. Your spleen is basically a collecting place for B cells and T cells to meet up and communicate. Um, your appendix is another location where there's a lot of immune systems that kind of traffic through and check out what's going on and um, pyrus patches in your small intestine. You probably should also include the thymus. Uh, I don't see it labeled, but the thymus is a special organ where T cells develop, and we're going to see a picture of those in a little bit. So I got about four and a half minutes to talk about basically non-specific immune system. So going back, we've got our skin. It's the first line of defense. It's a protective barrier. Um, if something gets inside, we then have to rely on our second line of defense, our cell system, and um, specific proteins that get released. Um, there's another cool molecule that um, your book talks about, which is a fairly new one. Um, it's not in the Campbell textbook, and it's I've not seen this one described. But we have a um, protein in our system called defensin, and it recognizes the um, membranes of pathogens or bacteria. And basically, the defensins poke a hole in there, and they ultimately make holes in the membrane and make the pathogen explode. We're going to see this theme used several times. The immune system likes to find a pathogen, mark its membrane, punch holes in its membrane, and have it explode. So what happens if you get a splinter? This is always a favorite um, example of mine. When a splinter comes in, it's probably not pristine and clean unless you're in an operating room. So it's going to bring a little bacteria in on them. Turns out that the damaged tissue itself starts to initiate part of this immune response. It attracts some um, cells, the mast cells that have um, histamine in them. Um, and they start spilling out the histamine, which makes these blood vessels a little leaky and kind of calls our phagocytes to the to the rescue. Um, also, um, the mast cells um, start to secrete tumor necrosis factor, which is another stimulatory molecule to basically call the um, call the um, uh, phagocytes over and activate them. So again, the vessels become leaky as part of the um, inflammatory response, and leakiness means that the um, phagocytes that are getting called over to here can kind of sneak through the capillaries and come out into the tissues and survey the tissues and eat up the pathogens. So they literally encompass um, those pathogens. This would have been a neutrophil that engulfs the bacteria and dies, and then this would be more of the uh, dendritic cell macrophage that eats it and stays alive and goes and takes off and goes to show it to the T-cell world. Very cool picture of a phagocyte encompassing and engulfing a yeast cell. What happens when it takes it in? Basically that, um, remember endocytosis, and this is um, a larger scale, so um, it, phagocytosis is a bigger scale one, brings it into a vesicle. That vesicle fuses with the lysosome. Remember the lysosome has those enzymes that chew things up, chews them up and um, spits them out and or um, is we're going to see it interact with a molecule called MHC class 2 then it'll go and put those pieces out on the membrane of the dendritic cell. Another thing that can happen when they um, take the pathogen in and this is part of the um, innate immunity or non-specific immunity. Your textbook doesn't talk about it, but this is a pretty cool idea that just um, was discovered maybe about 10, 12 years ago. There's a series of receptors called toll-like receptors because they look like a receptor that had been previously identified that was called toll. Funny. So there's a series of them. You can see there's TLR3, 9, 5, 4. We don't even have them all on this slide. Each one is designed to recognize a slightly different molecule. Let's start in here. So maybe a um, bacteria got brought in and or a virus got brought into the phagocyte and TLR3 is specialized to see double-stranded RNA. So remember we just talked about viruses. Um, some viruses have double-stranded RNA. That's usually not normal in a human normal eukaryotic cell. So this TLR3 recognizes double-stranded DNA. So it sends a message out, we have a virus. We don't know what kind of virus it is, but we got a virus. We got to get rid of it. TLR9 um, a, a special kind of DNA it's specialized for. TLO4 recognizes um, lipopolysaccharide, which is a special protein that's on bacteria. So this is going to tell the world, the immune, immune world in your body that you've got some bacteria in there. And flagellin is another prokaryotic um, specific protein. They are not specific for the kind of bacteria it is. They're just saying, hey, bacteria. And these guys are saying, hey, virus. I think I'm going to have to stop here. It looks like it's just about time anyway. Uh, yes, because the next slide is about acquired immunity, so that will be the next topic.